Hello, my name is Peter Bricks. I'm a debtor bankruptcy attorney. Uh, practice in the Northern District of Georgia. Uh, we have offices in Atlanta and Jonesboro. Uh, today I'm here to talk to you about Chapter 13 plans, um, what they are, how you get them confirmed. Uh, but first I want to uh, uh, read you this disclaimer. We are a debt relief agency proudly assisting consumers in filing bankruptcy. There's no attorney-client relationship with the viewer of this message um, unless there is a fee agreement. Uh, so we would have to meet with you individually to offer you applicable and accurate legal advice that should be used strictly for informational purposes. Today we are going to talk about Chapter 13 plans, getting them uh, confirmed. And uh, the first thing you do, it's similar to Chapter 7 as far as the paperwork. You fill out the file your case. Um, with the only uh, exception, um, well, two exceptions. One, the means test is slightly different, but the other exception is you fill out a plan. Chapter 7, there is no repayment plan. It's a straight liquidation, uh, and, and most of the times there's no assets. There are no assets to liquidate. Chapter 13, uh, there is a repayment plan. Um, so uh, in previous uh, videos, I've discussed the means test and and how the results of the means test can impact what you pay in a Chapter 13. Uh, so I won't go too much into detail in that. Um, all I'll say is just like a Chapter 7, you have a meeting of creditors. Um, at that point, you uh, go over your uh, plan with uh, your attorney, um, if you have one, and the trustee. In any event, you're meeting the trustee and, and creditors can appear at the meeting. Uh, at that point, what would make this different than a Chapter 7 is um, at least in the Northern District, the trustee will actually verbalize uh, his or her objections at the meeting, uh, but those aren't official. Seven to ten days later, you'll get the written objections um, in the mail. Now, um, actually, when you filed the case and got notice of your trustee meeting, you also got notice of a confirmation date. That date is usually um, about four to six weeks after your trustee meeting date. So in that interim, uh, between the trustee meeting date and the confirmation hearing to get your plan confirmed, you have to resolve those objections. That's uh, communication with the trustee, uh, figuring out uh, you know what you have to do to satisfy those objections. Maybe you're not paying your unsecured creditors enough. Uh, that would be a typical objection. Some of it could be paperwork stuff. Um, in any event, you really want to work it out with the trustee. Uh, otherwise, if you and the trustee can't reach a meeting of the minds, uh, that's why there are judges, and you could uh, have it determined by, by the judge at the confirmation hearing. Additionally, the trustee is not the only party that might object. You might have a creditor object. Um, the unsecure, an unsecured creditor could object that they're not getting paid enough. A uh, secured creditor could object that, um, uh, for instance, in a, particularly in a situation with a car, um, that you're not devising a uh, proper payment of the car. Um, there's a provision in a Chapter 13 called a cram down where you can reduce the uh, car uh, balance to the uh, fair market value as opposed to the contract note balance. Um, this is only applicable if you've owned the car for at least 910 days and it's uh, purchase money. Um, so that might not even be applicable to you. Um, you also, in almost every scenario, can adjust the interest rate lower to around prime plus one and a half to three percent. So uh, the, uh, your vehicle lender could object uh, the way they were being treated and then that would be an objection you have to resolve. Um, additionally, um, to get your plan confirmed, you've got to prove you, make the, you made the trustee payments. Trustee payments are every 30 days after the case is filed. So by confirmation, you'll have probably had at least two payments uh, due. Um, additionally, you have to, if you, particularly if you have an uh, ongoing uh, mortgage, your filed Chapter 13 to retain your home. Uh, the, the rears are lumped into your repayment plan, but the ongoing mortgage payment must be made. Um, once your case is filed, you have to start making the contract payment. So you have to be able to prove um, uh, through documentation that you've made that payment. Um, you might have also said you made charitable contributions um, uh, as part of your means test deduction. Uh, if so, you're going to have to prove uh, th those contributions. You're also um, 
uh, going to have to uh, um, potentially prove, uh, prove some other payments or need to produce some additional other documents. Maybe you're self-employed and the trustee wants you to set aside money for your taxes at the end of the year. Uh, so they want proof that you have a separate savings account just for that. So um, you have to get all this done, as you, as you can imagine. Um, this is not an easy task if you uh, uh, don't have an attorney. Um, there are some other things that are also complicating the situation. Um, in Chapter 13, you have to pay all your arrears on your mortgage. You have to pay um, all your taxes that are, pri quote, priority taxes, um, and uh, your domestic support obligations that you might be in arrears. Um, and the question is, can you afford that? So, for instance, um, if you have $60,000 in mortgage arrears and you're in a 60-month plan, that means if you pay them at the same amount every month, which is what you're supposed to do in a Chapter 13, you need to devote at least $1,000. Uh, you know, your payment plan is at a minimum $1,000 just based on that. You're also going to have other fees like the remainder of your attorney's fees, your trustee commission, uh, maybe an unsecured pool dividend. You might also have uh, your car note. I know in the Northern District of Georgia, that's part of your car, your uh, trustee payment. So you might not even have a, quote, feasible plan. That could be, A, one of your objections, but B, um, if it's not feasible, you can't afford that $1,000 a month on top of your living expenses, on top of your regular mortgage payment. Um, then most likely you're not getting your plan confirmed because you can't make the trustee payments wherever you come up with the money for, for either the trustee or the ongoing mortgage payments, everything you need to produce to get your plan confirmed. So um, if you don't get your plan confirmed at confirmation, if you've done certain things like show up at your meeting of creditors, file all your schedules, um, and maybe there's some issue out there, uh, for instance, your lender has not filed a proof of claim, so you're not sure the exact amount of your arrears, um, you can get what's called a reset of your confirmation, but um, uh, generally speaking, um, you know, you, you might get one reset. Usually, it, it the matters tend to resolve itself one way or another um, by the reset hearing, and uh, you, you know, usually you get your plan confirmed within two or three months of filing, unless you just can't get it confirmed, and that that's always a possibility. You might not have a feasible plan. So um, that's uh, a pretty good summary of Chapter 13 plans and bankruptcy in the uh, Northern Dist District of Georgia.